Hello, and welcome to the Project Management Professional, or PMP, certification course offered by Simply Learn. In this lesson, you will get an introduction to the PMP certification course. Note that all our practice tests are aligned with the new exam format rolled out by PMI version 5 of 2013 and the examination content outline 2015. After completing this lesson, you will be able to define PMI and PMP, identify the application requirements for the PMP examination, identify the guidelines to fill up the PMP application, describe the PMP exam outline and syllabus. Let us now begin with the terms PMI and PMP. Project Management Institute, or PMI, is not-for-profit organization that offers a certification program for project practitioners for all educational and skill levels. PMI is based in the USA and has local chapters across the globe. Therefore, if you are based in Singapore, you can look for a PMI chapter in Singapore. Such local chapters conduct regular knowledge sharing and networking sessions for people interested in project management. Project Management Professional, or PMP, on the other hand, is one of the certifications awarded by PMI. It is a credential industry recognized and demanded worldwide. For many of the project management jobs, it is a mandatory qualification. PMP is not restricted to a specific domain. A project manager working in any industry, be it manufacturing, retail, defense, or information technology, can write the PMP exam and upon successful completion can be a PMP certified professional. To sum up, PMI is an organization and PMP is a credential. PMI therefore writes and supervises the PMP examinations. If you need more information on PMI, you can visit their website, www.pmi.org. A PMP credential is valid for three years. After the completion of this three-year period, it can be renewed for another three years. PMI measures project management experience in the units of PDU. PDU means Professional Development Unit. You can acquire PDUs in many ways. For example, if you attend a project management class of one hour by an expert, it is considered equivalent to one PDU. If you write a white paper on the topic related to project management, it may be equivalent to five PDUs. PMI has detailed guidelines on what kind of project management activity amounts to how many PDUs. You can look for the CCR Handbook on the PMI website for more details. Over a three-year period, one must have acquired 60 PDUs to be eligible to renew the PMP certification. After submitting the information about the acquisition of at least 60 PDUs in the last three-year period, you need to pay the renewal fee in order to renew the certification for another three years. This can be conveniently done online at www.pmi.org. PMI releases a guide every four years. It's called PMBOK Guide, that is, a guide to the project management body of knowledge. PMBOK Guide acts as a textbook for the PMP exam. PMBOK Guide can be considered as a standard for project management profession. In the next screen, we will look into the application requirements for the PMP exam. Following are a few guidelines that will help you fill up your application. First, you should become a PMI member before applying for the PMP examination. If you are not already a member, members get a discount of $150 for the PMP application, which is more than the cost of membership itself. This will help you save money in the first process itself. Becoming a member is a fairly straightforward process and can be completed online at www.pmi.org. Make sure you enter the contact details and name correctly. This is important for you not to miss any correspondence information. Also, ensure that the details on the certification are correct. You need to be careful while filling the Project Experience field in the Experience Verification form. Be brief in stating what you have done on the project. Focus on specifically the work that you have done. Contact all the primary contacts mentioned in your application prior to submitting it, for they should be prepared to support you in providing evidence about the experience, if required during the audit process. If you are not sure, ask an existing PMP professional to review before submitting. 
If your application is picked up for audit, follow the instructions given in the email, gather the evidence, and submit it for a smooth process. Now that you have a fair understanding on the filling process of PMP application, let us focus on PMP exam process in the next screen. PMP exam is conducted for four hours. It covers 200 questions, out of which 25 questions are considered as pre-test questions used for future tests and are not scored. You will not be communicated about these questions. They might be any random pick. Therefore, you should answer all 200 questions with the same seriousness. PMI includes these questions to see how many test takers are getting them right. Based on this, they might decide to include these questions in the future exam. It is similar to a survey conducted by PMI. Of the 200 questions, therefore, 175 will be scored. All questions are multiple choice questions with only one correct answer. You get one point for every question answered correctly. There is no negative marking for the incorrect ones. You may also mark a question for review and revisit it at the end if unsure then. However, you should attempt all the 200 questions in the given time. PMI grades students on each of the five process groups and based on the grading, they declare PMP, pass or fail. The grades are not disclosed to everyone, rather a rating is given. They are below proficient, proficient, and moderately proficient in each of the five process groups. The percentage of questions from each of these aspects is listed on the table. The result, pass or fail, is determined by a combination of these grades. How many grades or number of points one has to score to pass the PMP exam is not made public by PMI. The questions in PMP exam are related to various aspects of project management. These aspects, which are known as project management process groups, are project initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling, and closing. The percentage of questions and number of questions that may appear from each process group are listed on the given table. For more details, please refer to the PMP examination content outline on the PMI website. Let us discuss the PMP exam syllabus. There are five process groups, 10 knowledge areas, and 47 project management processes. To understand the syllabus, you need to understand the following terms, process groups, knowledge areas, and processes. Let us first discuss process group. The project management discipline is divided into five broad process groups. When a new project starts, it is first in the project initiation phase, moving to planning phase, then to execution, followed by monitoring and controlling, and finally, it is closed. Project execution and monitoring and controlling processes go hand in hand. Therefore, when a new project is initiated, all processes of project initiation process group should be applied to the project. Similarly, when the project is being closed, all processes of project closing group should be applied. For instance, identify risks is a process of project planning group. So when the project is in planning phase, you must identify all the risks of the project. Next, let's see what knowledge area is. As per PMBOK guide, there are 10 knowledge areas. A knowledge area is a set of specific processes performed to meet a project objective. Let us now consider processes. There are 47 processes. These processes might be accomplished in the project planning process group and a few others in project monitoring and controlling process group. For example, develop schedule. One of the processes is a part of the planning process group and the project time management knowledge area. Likewise, in human resource management knowledge area, develop human resource plan process is in the project planning group and Manage Project Team Process is in Project Execution Group. Let us take an overview of all the lessons in this tutorial. We have 16 lessons in total. This is the first lesson, which is an introduction to the PMP certification. Lesson 2, Project Management Framework, aims to explain what project and project management is all about. It can be considered as an introduction to the project management. Lesson 3, Project Management Process Groups 
aims to explain the five project management process groups. The 10 knowledge areas are covered in Lesson 4 to Lesson 13. Each lesson is dedicated to each of these 10 areas. Lesson 14 revises the same processes from a process group perspective. This will help clarify the sequence in which some of the activities are carried out and understand these processes more holistically. In addition to the five process groups and 10 knowledge areas, PMI gives weightage to professional and social responsibility, which is explained in Lesson 15. Lesson 16 covers the new knowledge and skills that are added as part of the latest examination content outline. Once you are through with these 16 lessons, you can go ahead and take our online practice tests. With this, we have come to the end of this lesson. In the next lesson, we will cover Project Management Framework.